Okay, so welcome to the shop. We're back on the Oliver 192 bandsaw. Now, if you're new to the channel since probably like eight, 10 months ago, this is a bandsaw I'm restoring. Second bandsaw I've restored for my shop. And I'm gonna go more into details about the saw itself here further in the video, but we'll just jump into the process here. I've finished cleaning all the old paint off of it, sandblasting, and now I've decided to clear coat it. Generally, these saws are painted. Oliver's traditionally painted green. This one, I just thought it'd look cool to clear coat. It's my saw, I can do what I want. I'm using a uh, diamond coating from KBS Finishes. It's a, kind of a high gloss look, but you know, I, the verdict is still out. I still kind of keep going back and forth, but think I really like it. Uh, it's definitely a different type of look. It kind of looks raw and industrial, but you can see how cool all these components are. Even that Oliver badge there. Here are the guides. So I finished the last video. I have two videos up. so. Those are linked in the description. You can go watch those. I finished the last one taking these apart, actually, I think. And now I'm putting them back together. So they had really good guides with it. These are some bearings that support the thrust guide, which is a guide that goes behind your blade and supports your blade. When you press a, your material into the blade, it pushes the blade back and the thrust bearing contacts the blade and keeps that blade in place. Um, Basically, I'm tapping in these bearings. Uh, it looks like a bad idea to be tapping this with metal, but I promise I'm giving it real light taps. I'm not hurting anything. These are ceramic guides, so this is new to me. I've all of my saws in the past have had uh, ball bearing guides. The 36 Oliver that I restored prior to this, the old guides were no good on that saw. They were missing, so I replaced them with modern day guides. But I think I'm going to try to use these original guides. Keep it all original. So that's the actual thrust guide going on right there i don't i don't know exactly what that material is but it it has that shaft that went into the bearings and this will tighten down and then it, it can spin when the blade hits it and those bearings allow it to spin and it gives it a really good support for that saw blade one thing on these is the so a back cap is going to go on this i just screwed that down basically you fill this with oil and that keeps it oiled when I, when I did that, it leaked out through these caps. I think the, the, the bolts are not long enough to put a gasket. I tried putting a gasket in there. So I don't really know what I'm going to do. Maybe use a liquid gasket, something to keep that oil from dripping out of that reservoir where those bearings are. So these are the ceramic guides you see going in here. They, uh, they support the side of the blade. So any side to side movement, these are going to support um, that blade. Okay, so moving on to putting the saw back together. First thing we gotta do is get this body of the saw back on its base. The funny thing about the saw is it's actually advertised as the most portable bandsaw on the market. I guess it's designed to take off this base and be able to move it around to a job site possibly. I don't see how that's possible. This thing is heavy. It doesn't seem portable to me at all, but I guess that's how they marketed it back in the days. It basically bolts onto this base, and then from here we got to figure out how to put this thing back together. It's been a while, so I spent a lot of time watching my old YouTube videos and just slowly figuring out how these parts all piece back together. We're starting at the top of the saw, so the first thing we got to install is a tensioning spring, tensioning rod, and then there's a slide that goes over all this, and that's what's going to hold that top wheel to the bandsaw and allow it to go up and down in tension. The only part on the saw that was broken was that tension spring and straight up plane was able to fix that and replace that. We're going to talk about that here real soon. So that's that top piece that slides down in. The tensioning rod goes up through it. There's a thread in that and it, the rod just threads right into it. Okay. Okay, real quick, I want to share today's sponsor, Straight up Plane. Now they sponsor probably most of the series. We might as well just call it a series sponsor. They are a company based out of Oh, Pennsylvania, so, uh, I don't know, somewhere up northwest. They they deal all with old Oliver machinery. They have all the old documents, they rebuild them, they have a machine shop, they build machines. They are, when it comes to old Oliver Woodworking machines, they are the guys to know. They, I originally reached out to them um, because the spring on this tensioner was broken. So when we, if you guys remember when we took this thing apart, the only broken part on this machine was the tensioning spring. It was just in pieces. So you couldn't really tension it. Uh, and I basically all I had to do was send them uh, an email with some pictures of it. I pieced together the broken spring, got some measurements, and they pulled a spring that fit perfectly and replaced it. And it's in there now. It's what we, that's what we put, just put in. So it works great. At first I thought it was going to be, because we had to clamp it to pull it down. I thought it was going to be too much tension, but 
with that thrust bearing in there, I mean, it just, it turns real nice. So <clears throat> they helped with that. Also, upcoming videos. The next video, we're going to turn this thing on and get it running. I've been emailing them all this week on this setup. So I've taken the gearbox off. This is the motor mount here. I want to get it driving the way it originally was. So we're, we've, they found a motor that will mount here and then they can machine and make a coupling to get this shaft connected to the motor shaft. So they're working on that for me. That process, I couldn't have figured that out without their help. So, I mean, basically I took all the measurements of this mounting plate, the shaft, everything, scaled it all for him, sent it to him. And within like two or three days, he had it figured all out, had a motor and had a quote to me for it. Also, I have to, I mean, I totally forgot. And this is in the last video, y'all, are probably aware of this. I sent these wheels to their, I've mailed, shipped them up to um, their shop and they they tired them. So they got a nice new tire on and they crowned them. I don't know if you can see, see that slight peak right there? It's perfectly crowned right in the middle of the tire and they did a great job. You can see it when I spin it, kind of that high spot right there. So having a nicely crowned wheel is a big deal on how well your bandsaw is going to run. So I'm pumped to have that, I, from now on, if I restore a bandsaw, I'll probably send the wheels to them and crown them. Actually, I, I might send the 36 wheels eventually if I take a break from the shop for a while. I might pull those wheels off and ship them up to them because I crowned those and I did a horrible job compared to what they did. So they are just a huge job. I have to share one more thing. Y'all bear with me here because this is the coolest stuff. Um, these are birth certificates to my machines. They sent the original manual. Now this machine, that the 192 spanned a lot of years, but he was able to find, you know, basically the, you know, they have schematics in here, everything. It's really helpful, really. I, I wish I would have realized I had this. I totally forgot I had it when we were putting the machine back together, but this is it right here. So it's not an exact, exact match, but it's close. And it gives you all, it's, I mean, this thing was written way back in the days. It gives you all the information on it. It even gives me blade, uh, nine foot, eight inches. It's cool. So uh, they even has some of their old clients, the users of the Oliver. Um, I don't know any of them. I mean, obviously, we're not going to know any of these. Oh, Firestone. There you go. Westchester Electric. It's cool, man. This is just old, old documents that are fun to have. The I'll share these real quick. Birth certificate. This is the birth certificate. They call it, I don't know. I mean, I call it a purchase order. It, this one unfortunately doesn't have a price, but this is for this the the the, the bandsaw. So it was purchased in December the 11th, 1926, and it was for the Board of Education in Ottawa, Iowa. So it's for the public school. And here is the list of the machine or what the the item was. It was an Oliver 192 18 inch motor driven bandsaw, complete regular with motor for single phase 60 cycle 110 volt. Had a few extras that came with a quarter inch, three eighths, and eighth inch bit blade, and it gives you the route to Chicago. So that's that's really cool, man. I got the original document on this saw, and it's it's interesting. It's really pretty neat. So you can pull the plate. So this is the name tag. I haven't put it back on, and you go three two three nine eight three two three nine eight. So you got the original serial numbers matching up. It's cool. This one here, I got to show you this one because this one's interesting too. This is to my mortiser over there. You guys that follow my channel, you know I use the mortiser a lot to cut mortises, obviously. So this is the original purchase order for it. This also went to a school, Independent School District, Des Moines, Idaho Board of Education Furniture Factory, purchased on the 12-23-1957. Uh, and this is the Oliver 190D hollow chisel mortiser Three phase 60 cycle, 28, 28 volt, and the extra on this one was a tilting table. Uh, and it originally cost $1,487.26. That wasn't cheap back then. So that's that's cool. Interesting stuff. I, unfortunately, I don't have. The purchase order for the or the birth certificate for the big bandsaw on the back they couldn't locate that one so um that's it man they're they're an awesome company i've had a great time working with them they know their stuff and i want to make sure that they are shared in these videos i would highly recommend them if you're restoring an oliver these are those are the guys that call reach out to them go follow them on instagram they do cool stuff it's fun to watch 
and uh, give them some support that way if you don't have an Oliver machine. So thanks to those guys. I'll talk more about them in the next video because they're doing all the work for this and hopefully this all works out because this is there's a little bit of a cross your fingers on this, but I think we got it figured out. So let's jump back in and finish putting this bad boy together. Okay, so here we go. We got to get this tension. Our first, my thought here is that this is seems to be way too stiff of a spring. I thought maybe they gave me the wrong type of spring. It's taking a lot of effort to get this thing pinched down. And it's a little bit sketchy to be honest with you. <clears throat> the idea here is we're trying to get that tensioning rod low enough to get the knob on. There's a tapered pin that pins that knob to the rod, so you just gotta get it down to where those holes line up. I wonder what would happen if that came loose. Uh, we don't wanna find out. Probably shoot through the roof. Well, as long as it shot through the roof and not through one of us. Right, we're good here. We got it? Yeah. And here, so that's the pin. I learned my lesson on my old saw that these are actually tapered, so you don't want to go hammering on the wrong side of these because you can, when you're trying to get them out, you can ruin them real quick, hammer them in too far. Uh, so you've got to figure out where the small diameter is and start with that. I had a money shot. I'm moving the camera right here to get the perfect shot of me tapping this pin in, and then I turned off the camera and forgot to hit record. So you missed you missed me sending it home there, but you get the idea. I, I tapped that pin in, locked that knob in place. Now we're putting in basically it's kind of like a hinge pin. It's going to allow this piece my dad's holding to to hinge and move, and that piece he's holding has has got a, a shaft on it that holds that top wheel of the bandsaw. Just kind of getting this lined up. Once you get it lined up, it, it knocks into place, no problem. And then at this point, we're we're not super sure of how all this is working. <laughs> Glad you know how this goes back together. I have no clue. <laughs> don't know what's going to happen when you turn it on. It may all fly apart. All right. It's screwing into something, right it there. is. Yeah, it screws into that, and it that looks just like this. Yeah, it does. But what was the point of that? Does that hold it tight? That's the bottom one. I need photos. Um, this tilts it. So this is just an adjustment. Oh, is that your tilt? Because it hits that. And it kicks see, it this, this kicks way. it out like oh, that. Yeah. But then it doesn't kick it back in. And it looks like if you look at this shaft here, at one point it had a, it had it a had bearing a set on that. screw on it. Yeah. It had a set screw right here. I gotta take a break real quick. This is totally off the cuff. I'm not getting paid for this, but I don't know if you've heard of Biltong. It's a beef jerky that is made by South Africans. But my gosh, it's good. This company called Strive makes Biltong and it's so good. I love the jerky. The problem with beef jerky is it's got, always got additives, so many additives. I'm not really a big fan of eating anything that God didn't put on the earth. If you can't pronounce it, I just don't eat it. And if you look at beef jerky in a regular store, it's got all kinds of junk in it. This right here, I'll tell you what's in this. This is their hickory seasoned thinly sliced steak. Just get a look at that. Ingredients, beef, natural smoke flavor, vinegar, um, salt, black pepper, white pepper, garlic powder, coriander, clove, nutmeg, rosemary, and green tea. Interesting, right? No nitrates, no gluten, no MSG, nothing artificial. One of my favorite, these steak bites. These things right here, you open this bag, they're gone immediately. This is the, look at this, we got pepper. This is actually kind of spicy. They have some really spicy ones. We got wrappers in here. Beef sticks are really good. I have to be honest with you guys. They did send me this beef jerky. <laughs> it's delicious. They're not paying me. They're not paying me. There's a link in my description. I would recommend checking it out. I'm gonna go back to the bandsaw now. Sorry, I had to share that with you. Sorry, sound like he was being killed. All right, now we put bearings on. This one, now I, we heated this bearing up quite a bit before we put it on the shaft. And um, I've just got a steel bar for my bar clamps. That was the perfect diameter of that inner ring on the on the bearing. And it just tapped it right home. It worked great, no problem. Put a little bit of oil on there. 
and it slid right back. All right, so this is the back uh, panel, kind of back cage to it. So the wheel will go in front of this, and this just kind of keeps you from getting your hand in that wheel from the back side. Now we ta carefully tap on the top wheel. It's gonna slide over that bearing we installed, and then we're gonna have to come back and put another bearing in on the front side. So same process here. We put the heat to that. That's why I'm holding it with gloves. And then we just use that uh, pipe, kind of carefully tapping it here to get it started. And then we'll use that pipe to get it uh, all the way home. see how nice that spins it's nice having it on fresh new Rolls bearings through, the weight of these wheels you know they're solid cast iron they have a lot of momentum inertia maybe that keeps them going for a while so this is unique and this saw doesn't have a door for the front it has basically this panel that slides over that shaft and it has a set screw that holds it in place and then that screw that we used to adjust until earlier will go in so if you got to change the blade you got to pull that whole panel off. A little bit of a bummer. This 192 saw, it was built for a long stretch of years, and they have they have ones that have doors. This one's one of the older ones, so it didn't have the door yet. So this is the gearbox that drives the lower wheel. We're gonna connect the motor to the lower wheel. Putting bearings. There's four bearings that go in this. I should not be hammering that with a hammer, and I, I end up having to file that back. Uh, I should be using a mallet for that. I don't know, I get going, get excited, and I forget. I shouldn't be doing that. It kind of mushrooms it up. This is the this is the bottom shaft. So there is a phenolic resin gear that goes on this. I think it is. You guys solved this problem for me months ago in the last video when I pulled this apart. And it was like a, a plastic gear inside. I was like, what is this thing? Got a ton of comments, people telling me what it was. It's actually a gear that's designed to fail if there's too much um, power put on it. So I didn't get a great shot of that gear. Unfortunately, you have to go back to the other video, but it's in there now. Uh, we put it in there and then hammered the shaft through it and into the bearing. And so now we got these little plates that slide over the shaft and screw in place. We've got one on each, on, this, to on top and bottom. Now what we're gonna do is start on the top part, the top shaft, same process, I got a block of wood here hammering it's the diameter of the bearing just hammering that into its housing and then this particular shaft actually has you can see that has the gear on it um, and so if something did go wrong that gear would just strip out that phenolic resin gear and you could pretty easily take it apart and replace that gear the this particular shaft I'm trying to remember is the one that the motor will go to so the motor's gonna hook to this shaft with a coupling, and then the bottom shaft coming out of that, going the opposite direction, goes to your bottom wheel on the bandsaw. Okay, so that's the last bearing going in right here. Got a little pipe, probably could have used the wood dowel here, but trying to get some dirt off that, because I obviously don't want to push a bunch of sawdust down into my bearings. We're gonna keep those clean as we can. And these tap in just slightly past the housing and then we'll put that cap back on. Okay, then the lid goes on, so basically if you you, it's like an oil bath, so you would take this little lid off, fill it with oil. I'm, I'm not sure how high you fill it, probably right to that bottom gear, to the little bit below the shaft of the bottom gear. And then it allows it to kind of circulate up through and keep it oiled. I'm going to guess that's it. The two holes you see 
um, there on the outside of that gearbox or for your motor mount we're gonna put on here in a second now we get it mounted on the body just four bolts I love the old bolts they're so cool they uh, I don't know they just have a really cool look to them and shape to them they were the same way on my old all, all the 36 inch all over these are actually a year apart so um, you know, 1925 is the old Oliver, the big Oliver, and 1926 obviously is this little dude. So, they're close. A lot of components kind of look the same between the two. All right, bottom wheel slides on. I think, if I'm showing it right, I actually put it on backwards to start. Yeah, and we're going to find out here in a second as my dad and I have a, a long discussion on why things aren't lining up. for the bottom wheel. There's some combination. Well, is this is this straight? Well, that's the thing. It, it's all the way in this way. So, it... If this one... Well, it's got to be... It's got to be flat. Say if this bottom is out just a little bit, then, then it would make this one off. Mm -hmm. But you would see it with your straight edge. Oh, we have it on backwards. We have the wheel on backwards. This wheel? Yeah. That makes sense. That's my fault. Well, that's an easy fix. Okay, so that solves the problem. Flip the rail around, we're pretty much pretty dead close to Copeland. I think it was slightly off, uh, but I'll tackle that once I get ready to, to fire up the machine and get it going. You can see how, man, it's just awesome to spin those wheels. They spin so nice. Now comes the table. Cool thing about this, this is a 30, no, 24 by 20 table. Uh, I have an 18 inch, my, my newer Oliver 18 inch, which this is taking the place of has an 18 by like 16 table so this is a big table and that's what I love about it, it also tilts really easily on this 45 this, this is kind of cool too because this lever here my dad's putting on is the same lever that's on the big 36 so as, as I was saying earlier a lot of the parts are kind of interchangeable and coming from the you know same time era adjustable positive stop so hopefully I guess you either grind on it or grind add it. something yeah. to it shim it or grind shim it. it yeah okay last thing to do is put it in place and then uh, we're gonna do a little overview of it here and you gotta wait for one more video before this thing's up and running All right, so that's gonna shut it down for this video. Real quick overview of the saw and where we're at with it. Um, so basically, yes, we got it all together. I did take the wheel off. You know, I, I mentioned earlier with the straight o plane talk that this all had to be taken off so I could get measurements so they could send all the parts and motors for that. So basically, we got the door down here, swings, close, it latches, right? This pretty crude little system there. Um, <clears throat> we got the table. Table tilts by loosening this, and then you just kind of hand tilt it. You got a gauge back here. It's hard to see because it's a little bit dark, but this will have to be tweaked a little bit probably. I don't know if maybe I can tap on that and bend it, but you know, I, I generally I don't really use these. I'll just use a bevel or something. So not overly worried about that. The 
tensioning, obviously we got we talked about that, that set up and going. This is the tilt for the blade. So as I tighten this in and it hits, we took a while to figure this out earlier in the video, but we got it. This will tilt our, our blade and get it positioned where we need it. This is the oil. This is kind of cool. This is an old, uh, I didn't realize how this thing worked. If I can get it unscrewed without screwing. Oh, so this is how I guess they grease things before they had grease guns and Zerk fittings. You would pack grease in this guy. And then as you screwed this in, it, com it compresses that grease and sends it through a channel down in here into the bearings. So that's kind of interesting and cool. Didn't know about that. The tag is going to go on. Straight up plane sending me some rivets to get that on. And then let me show you one thing real quick. The I don't know if this is the original switch, but I'm going to assume that it is. And this thing is old and really pretty dang cool. It like clicks it on that way. So I think I'm going to polish this up, clean it up, and try to try to reuse it. It mounted right here, just like that. So I mean, it'll. It'll be cool looking, especially if we get it polished up. So that'll be in the next video. We'll work on that. Next video is going to be fun because we're going to get this thing running, actually turn it on. I've got blades ordered for it. They're on the way. Uh, like I said, the motor's on the way. The coupling, well, it's not on the way, but it's ordered, and that process started. So I bet two or three weeks we'll have this thing uh, fired up and turned on and running. So I can't wait. It's it's The great thing is, is I really need it. Um, I do a lot. If I want to do curve cuts in here on the bandsaw, I have to do it on the big Oliver back in the back, and it's a pain to switch out the blade. So I can designate that saw as a big blade, resaw, rip, rough cut blade, and then this little saw here can do fine work, curves, and little things. It can, it can even cut metal. I uh, likely will put this on a VFD so we can slow it down for metal. And so anything off the bench real quick I need to cut. If I'm doing something with a little curve, I can come over to the saw and knock that out and not have to worry about going to the big saw and excited to, to be close to getting this done. It's taken a long time. So if you're not familiar with this, there's two videos prior to this I did at the beginning of the year. Go watch those and see what's up with that. And then you can get yourself caught up. And then here in a couple weeks, we'll get a motor mounted on it and fire it up. So stay tuned. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And a big thanks to Straight Up Plane as always. And we'll see you next time.